I'm going to show you how you can sculpt this beautiful pumpkin for your Halloween renders. Firstly, I'm running a Halloween competition, running from now till the 29th of October. The title is Halloween, so create your best Halloween scene or anything that you think depicts Halloween. Both 2D and 3D renders are accepted, but just stills, no animations. To join, go across to the Discord server, links in the description, and submit in the competition channel. The prize for the winner has been given to us by today's sponsor, Samsung. They're going to give the winner a 1TB SSD. Samsung are the number one provider of flash memory in the world. They are also the only SSD manufacturer to make everything in-house, which means they have the most reliable quality control which is also why they're known for their reliability in general. The 980 Pro 1TB drive that you can win is compatible with PlayStation 5 as upgradable storage and is one of the fastest options on the market. It's an extremely versatile drive that can be used for PC builds or for upgrading laptop storage, providing the laptop itself offers upgradability. So thanks very much to Samsung for providing such a wonderful prize. Do check out the entries on the Discord server and put an emoji next to the ones that you like, as that can often help me to identify the audience's favourites. But of course, I'll make the ultimate decision. Comment below with any questions you have and I'll try and answer them. So why not sculpt a pumpkin and then maybe add some cool candles? And who knows, you could win this wonderful prize. Okay, so here's where we got up to with the previous tutorial. So do check that out in order to get up to this point. And you can get this file from the links in the description. I've got a pumpkin, the stalk, and a light inside it. First of all, I'll select the body of my pumpkin and go across to the modifiers. The first thing we need to do is apply this modifier. It won't work in sculpt mode. Let's just come in a bit and see if we've got enough thickness there. I think maybe a touch more. It does all depend on the size of your pumpkin, but mine's at 0.12. Yours might be very different depending on the size of your pumpkin and sphere. So to apply this modifier, we can either come up to here and press apply, or you can see the keyboard shortcut there is control A. So if I hover over this and press Ctrl A, it applies the modifier. Now it's all part of my mesh. Now before going into sculpt mode, if I press N on my keyboard and go up to item, you can see the scale is set to one for the pumpkin, so that's good. But I think for the stalk, that hasn't got a scale of one, and it's a good idea to reset the scale. To do that, we press Ctrl A to apply the scale, and you can see that's all now set to one. Now when we sculpt these items, there won't be any anomalies. So let's click on our main pumpkin and go across to sculpting. I'll bring out my brushes so you can read them. And it's put me in sculpt mode. So if I start sculpting now, you can see I'm changing the mesh, but I'll undo that. It's not doing a lot. That's because we haven't got much topology. If I go into edit mode, you can see that's all we've got to play with. So I need to remesh. So back into sculpt mode. Now our remesh options are up here and we can remesh from in here. But first we need to figure out what our voxel size should be. So I'll zoom in just a touch and I'll press Shift R and that will show me the size of the faces that it will create on my object. And I'll bring this right down to I think around 0 0.004 is our best option. This does depend on the power of your computer, but you can see the size of the faces that I'm using here. So I'll left click to set that voxel size and then Control R will do the actual remesh. Now your computer might pause for a moment while it's figuring it out, but you can see the remesh there. It looks a little bit blocky at the moment, but we can sort that out during the sculpt. What I'll also do is come up to my overlays here and show you the statistics. So you can see how many faces I've got. One million faces should be fine for most computers, but if you're having problems, then obviously bring the voxel size up a little bit so you've got bigger faces. Okay, now we're ready for sculpting. I'm going to start using my graphics tablet. I'm using an XP Pen Artist 24, which I'm due to do a review for, so watch out for that. It's a really well-priced display tablet. You don't have to have a display tablet, you can just use a normal graphics tablet. Check out my ultimate guide to graphics tablets, link in the description. Now the first thing we want to do is kind of smooth it out. Now there's a great option for that in the brushes. If I scroll right down, there's mesh filters just here. If you click on mesh filters and change it where it says inflate, we can change that to smooth. And now when I click and drag to the right, you can see that it smooths it out now don't go too far with this, and it may lag a little to catch up depending on your poly count, but we don't want to lose the sharp edges around the mouth, but we do want to lose some of the sharp edges around the surface of our object. So somewhere around there, I would say. So I've still got a bit of lumpiness around the surface, but I've still got this sharp edge to a degree anyway around here, which we can sharpen up later. So I'm gonna scroll back up and go back to my drawer, and I'm going to use the smooth brush now to change my brush size is F to change the size and move your mouse or pen side to side. I need to make it nice and big. 
To change the strength is Shift F, but we'll talk about that in a moment. To use the smooth brush, I hold down Shift and I can paint, and that's the same as using the smooth brush just there. Now I want to go around my mesh and just smooth out these blocky areas. I can actually go to the smooth brush and just use the smooth brush like this. That will enable me to change the strength slightly. So I could put this up to nine and start smoothing out. But I do prefer to hold down shift usually when I'm using this. And that will always just jump to the smooth brush and use whatever settings you've got set here. So going around, smoothing out these lumps. I might put that all the way up to one and make my brush really big. I'll make my brush a bit smaller now when I come around to the more detailed areas because I don't really want to overlap the edges. As you can see there, it's rubbing out the edge, so I'll undo that and try and just keep where I can away from the edges just to smooth out the rest of it. Don't worry if you go over a little bit, it doesn't matter too much because we will be sharpening those up a little bit later. And that's looking okay. Okay, so now for the kind of first level of detail of our pumpkin. Now it's important to have some reference images. Here's my Pure Ref, links in the description for this program, but it's quite handy because I can just drag and drop images that I get from the internet and have them as references. Now I'm going for a pumpkin that looks a bit more like this. So it's got big creases and quite a lot of lumpiness. So I quite like that, but it's very useful to have images of the surface and detail. So I've got those off on my second monitor. And the first thing I want to do is those creases. So let's go across to the crease brush. And we'll zoom in just a touch. Now you might just want to see what your crease brush looks like. So mine's really wide at the moment and it's not creating a very deep crease. So I'll undo that. I'll bring the strength down and then start building a crease along here. That seems to be working well. Just be careful when you come to your edges along these points here. As you can see there, they all squished into each other. So I'll undo that, go on a little bit finer and try not to hit those edges. I might have to bring the brush down a little bit as well to do that. And come into the bottom somewhere around here. I'll make my brush big and just sort of create a bit of a dent for the bottom there. Okay, so that's our first crease and we need to continue that going all the way around. And I might just turn the strength up a little bit of my brush. So a little bit too much there, about there. So it's just start mapping out your creases first and then just follow them around. They can be nice and organic and wobbly. That's absolutely fine. Again, just watch out for that sort of pull of some of the edges, as you can see there. So bring your brush down a little bit so it doesn't create too much of distortion. And the fact that I'm moving in and out the mesh means my brush is kind of resizing every now and again. You might just want to resize it manually with F, but a bit of variation is very important with organic items such as this. Okay, so it's starting to work fairly well already. So those are our big ridges and we need smaller lines. So we can come in and just start doing lighter lines that aren't as deep. Might bring my strength down a tiny bit. If you feel like you need to smooth out any areas, then remember, hold down shift. But I feel like we're certainly getting somewhere now. Okay, so we're getting there with the first level of detail. The only thing now to do is to kind of sharpen these edges up a bit. And for that, we use the reverse crease. So to reverse a brush, you hold down control and that actually sharpens the edges of our shape. You might need to smooth one side a little bit because it kind of pinches it together. But we can go around our shape, just sharpening up this edge and smooth out if you feel you need to. You can get the edges of the teeth as well and sharpen those up, but they don't seem so bad for me. A little bit of softness here and there doesn't matter too much because it's meant to be organic, like I probably keep saying. Okay, so you can see around here, there's a little bit of lumpiness. So you just need to smooth this side of it. But generally speaking, we're not too bad. There's a little bit of sort of lumpiness down here. You can smooth that out, crease in again, and that sometimes helps that sort of lumpiness that's sometimes created from the remesh. Okay, so we're not looking too bad there. Just watch out for areas like this where there's a bit too much pinching going on. You might have to smooth those out and then cut in again and just try and smarten them up a little bit. Again, mainly using the smooth brush to help those areas. And we can pinch in a little bit with the teeth around here if you want to sharpen those up as well. But I think generally we're looking okay. 
So we're ready for our next level of detail. And this is where it gets quite fun. We can create texture brushes that we can use to paint our bobbly texture onto our pumpkin skin. If I bring the reference images back and maybe zoom in on this one, you can see it's very lumpy and bobbly and just organic. These ones in particular over here have a real roughness to them. So we'll try and get some of that onto our object. So let's go to the draw brush for that. And in the brush settings over here, we can come down to where it says texture and add a new texture. I'm going to give this a name and I'm going to call it Big Bumps and press enter. And now we've got a texture in here, but in order to edit that texture, we need to go to the texture tab just here, the texture properties. So I'll tick on that. And you can see I've got the Big Bumps brush just there. And it's saying, what do I want to use for my texture? Now you can actually bring in an image if you've got a bumpy image. And that can be quite useful. And I've got videos about that in my sculpting playlist. Links in the description. But we'll keep it nice and simple for now. So I'll just go to where it says image or movie. I'll change that to clouds. And we've got some nice sort of bumpiness there. And I find the defaults are pretty good. You can change the size of your brush to change the size of this if you need to. So back to the brush settings. And then you'll see the texture updates here with the big bumps texture. And if I press F to resize, you can actually see the bumps there. So I want them about this sort of size to create some bumpiness over my object. Now, if I start painting now, it's pretty good, but for one, it's too strong. So I'll undo that and bring the strength down. You can change the strength here or you can press Shift F. And I think down to about 0.2 seems to work well. Let's just see what that looks like. And that's lovely. You can actually use the mouse for this bit and it works reasonably well as well. The other thing you can change if I scroll down a bit is the mapping. At the moment it's tiled and you might see the tiles on your object. So you might want to change that to random. So I can go in and just add some of this bumpiness. And it's just a case of painting it on and it seems a nice sort of size. I can just flood this whole shape with this, with this bumpy looking texture. And you don't really even have to be that careful with this. Okay, so that's a good start there. I can add a new texture down here. So new texture, and I'll call this little bumps. Go to the texture tab again, and I've got little bumps here as my brush. I can change this, maybe try something different like the marble. And this time it's a good idea to add lots of turbulence. So it looks quite distorted and we can get some interesting shapes out of this. So back to my brush settings. Let's just see what that looks like. And you can see that adds a different kind of bumpiness. I'll bring my brush down a little bit more. So these are going to be sort of little bumps around the place. You can also dig in, remember, so hold down control will dig in to certain areas. And this will help add a nice lot of variation to our shape. I wouldn't go overboard with this brush and I might bring the strength down a little bit more. So 0.1 in this case. That's just a tiny bit too much, so 0.15 this time. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. You can experiment a lot more with this. If you ever want to get back to just the draw brush, then close down the textures, and then they won't be there anymore. You can always get them back if you click on them. You can choose the texture again, and you've got that texture back. So I'll close that down for now. And I quite like the way our pumpkin's looking. I think we do need to change the top a little bit though. So Control Tab to go to Object Mode, choose the top, and Control Tab to go to Sculpt Mode. We'll need to remesh this as well, so Shift R to choose our voxel size, bring that down. We can probably go a little bit higher with this, so 0 0.009, and Control R to remesh. That's looking okay. We'll probably want to distort the shape a little bit and bring the bottom out slightly. Again, looking at my reference images, if I find a good stalk, probably in here, I think. They've sort of got a hexagonal look to them. So we'll try and get something a bit like that. For this, I'll show you a new brush. You can use the grab brush and I'll come around to the top a bit more and press F to resize and kind of reshape this into slightly more of a hexagon anyway. And basically I'm just pulling it around and distorting it a little bit. It kind of underlaps itself a little bit. So just doing that as well. And I think we're looking a bit better there. I'll go back to the draw brush and just bring this section out just a touch. So that's just above the surface. It sort of has a bulbous bit and then digs in when it hits the surface. So I can hold down control and kind of dig it underneath slightly there. That looks good. And let's go to the crease brush and just sort out some of these. I need a bit of smoothing there and a bit of crease. Bring up the strength very slightly. 
Now it's having a lot more effect because the polygon count is much lower. I could increase it, but I kind of want to show you that you don't have to with some of the more minor shapes. You can have a bit less detail and that might help some people with less powerful computers. I can hold down control to make things sharper if I need to, maybe around the top of the stalk where it's been cut. I'm just adding a fair bit of variation. And you can see that looks a lot better now. Just going to use the grab brush again a little bit. And I quite like the way that's looking. I'm going to smooth it out just a touch. I'm going to go to my smooth brush, bring the strength down and smooth it out just a little bit in these areas. A bit too sharp. So again, you can do this on the draw brush and hold down shift, or you can actually go to your smooth brush if you want to. It's usually a lot quicker to hold down shift. You can bring in some textures here as well, maybe the little bumps, and see how that does. Bring the strength up a little bit though. And that's working reasonably well to add some distortion. It won't be so detailed because, again, this is a lower resolution remesh. If you want more detail, then of course you can. But again, just want to show you what you can do with less detail. Okay, I quite like the way it's looking. I'm going to go back to our pumpkin body, so into object mode, choose the pumpkin into sculpt mode, and I feel like I want to create a bit more crease with some of these. So I'm going to make my brush quite big. And if you want any areas to stick out more, you can use the inflate brush, and that might actually be a bit more successful. I just want a bit more substance to those creases. Now watch out for things like this, a bit of distortion on the texture. So you may have to smooth out just a touch and we can smarten up that texture a bit more later. So back to the draw brush and then just fill in any textures we want. And use the smooth brush if you need to or change the strength if it's a bit too powerful. Got a little bit too far out there so I'll just bring that in a little bit with the grab brush. I'm going to smooth this area out, I feel like that's a bit too much, and use the drawer again. You can use the grab brush to change the shape if you feel like any bits are not to your liking. The elastic deforms quite fun, you can get a quite a big area and kind of deform it and move the shape around like this if you feel like you need to. It takes a little while to get used to kind of the size of this one in terms of the size that it influences. Okay, I quite like that. One pumpkin. So let's go across to the shading tab and see our results. And so far, all I've got is an orange texture on there. I'll go to render view to see the results. That's my light inside, of course. And I've hidden the other lights in my scene, so I'll bring those back. And there's a floor there as well. We talked about lighting in the last episode, so I won't go any more through that. I do think though this light in here, if I click on the lighting settings, we can probably bring that up quite a good amount and that's a bit more like it, isn't it? Incidentally, someone was asking me about how you can make the light flicker. Well, you can right click on the power and insert a keyframe. So hopefully that will give you enough info to get some sort of flicker there. As for the texture, if I click on my pumpkin again, we can actually use the pointiness node. Lots of you will have seen me do that before if you followed my sculpting playlist. I'll move this across to the side slightly. Shift A to add input and geometry. And then you've got the pointiness down the bottom here. In order to make this work, you need a color ramp. So Shift A to add, Converter, Color Ramp. Bring that in there. Plug the pointiness in. Now I've got the Node Wrangler add-on installed. So Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, type in Node, and you've got Node Wrangler there. Now when I hold down Control, Shift, and left click, a little bit of a pause there, I can see the results of my color ramp. It needs a bit of editing, so I can drag the black up to about 0.4, drag the white down to about 0.6, Usually that's a really good starting point, and it's taking a few seconds to update. I'll turn the denoise off for now, so it causes less problems. Oh, that wasn't the problem, it's actually I'm coming out of the alpha. I must have pressed it twice, so Control shift left click and that will go to the color. And you can see it adds highlights to the peaks and shadows to the crevices. We can mess with this a little bit, but usually these settings seem to work quite well. I'll move these back over here. Shift A to add, color, mix RGB. I go through this a lot of times, so I'm not going into much detail. Put this one into the bottom, change it to multiply, and bring the factor right up. So this bottom color ramp is now multiplying this color here. If I drag and drop the orange into there, you can see it's having that sort of shading effect. I can bring the base color in, control shift left click on my principal BSDF, and we're seeing a bit more effect from that. 
I can go even further than this. So I'll select these, G to grab, Shift D to duplicate, and use an overlay on this one. So overlay here. Hopefully you can see that. I'll control shift left click on that so you can see the results. Slightly different to the multiply. The multiply, you can see, darkens it. The overlay adds a bit more of these highlights. So I can come into the top one here. So we've got an overlay and a multiply combined now to create this, which creates this. So it's looking that little bit better again. And we can add a little bit of color variation as well. So select these again, shift D to duplicate and I can change the colors of these. So the black, I can click on this and change it to maybe a sort of bluey color, somewhere around there. Change this one to a much more orangey color, somewhere around here, nice and bright. And I'll create a new one in the middle there and give that quite an orangey color as well. Plug that into the color. I'll just show you what that looks like. Control, shift, left click. Probably needs a little bit more variation there, something around there. That's good. The highlights actually, I'll give that a more yellowy color. There we go. And this I'll create a bit more brightness, bring it over to the red slightly more, somewhere around there. That looks like a good pumpkin color. Back out again. So that goes with the overlay. So it boosts that. With the multiply, that darkens that into our final scene. And we've got that. Not looking too bad, probably a little bit over the top with some of this um, shading in here so I can bring down the multiply slightly and that looks a little bit better I think. Okay it's looking pretty good we could probably do something as well with the top I'll time lapse that because I'll do the same thing I'm actually copying the pumpkin material giving a new one just rename it and changing these colors to greeny colors to see what that looks like that looks pretty good really kind of like what I'm seeing on my reference images okay the last thing so let's click on the pumpkin again. You might want to adapt the subsurface scattering. So I've got a subsurface scattering of 0 0.01. So 0 0.02 will do this. And that's the amount of light that kind of bleeds through your shape. 0 0.02 looks quite good there actually. So I think that's about right. A Little bit of a play with the light. Maybe I'll turn that up to 700 just to see. I think that's even better. And there we have it, a sculpted pumpkin so hopefully that was enough information for you to sculpt your own pumpkins and join in with the competition. If you'd like to see a candle tutorial, then maybe I could fit that in as well. Let me know in the comments and any other questions you might have. Do remember all the links are in the description for the Discord server and so on in order for you to enter the competition. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.